Hi everybody, this is Rob from Pariah Studios and welcome to this first in a new series uh, where I'm going to deal with kind of the essentials of Cinema 4D. So getting back to the basics of modelling, texturing, rendering and so forth. So for this first one, I'm going to recover something I did for my very first tutorial many years ago, which was modelling a chair. Now this example, um, I'm going to gloss over quite a lot of things. Uh, I'm just going to show a few core skills that are really useful and kind of fundamentals to learn just the very basic tools which will get you an awful long way and in fact it's probably the three or four tools with which you can make anything in Cinema 4D. Now there are other tools that we'll learn later on down the line but for now we're going to dive in, we'll use these simple tools and we're just going to concentrate on simple modelling of a, a fairly simple but very usable object. So with no further ado let's jump straight in and get started. Okay, so in Cinema 4D, we've got this new scene. And I'm gonna start off just by creating the base. So I'm gonna add a disc to the scene. Now there are many, many different ways you could model this base. And this is gonna be one of those kind of five-legged um, uh, uh, metal bases with a, like a central pillar. Um, so I'm gonna make the radius, let's say 45 centimeters. And I'm gonna take the disc segments down to two. And for the rotation segments, I'm just going to use five. And this is a pretty quick way. Actually, I'm going to take that down to one. I can add cuts if I need them. So this is a pretty quick way of getting uh, five points that are equally spaced without having to worry too much about what you're doing with them. And I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm just going to select the kind of star point ones. And I'm just going to right click and I'm going to choose bevel. And I'm going to bevel those points and what I'm looking for is the kind of the thinnest point here I'm ignoring the middle I'm just going for this is kind of the end of my leg so I'm happy with that I'm just going to go back into polygon mode I'm going to delete those ones I'm going to select that central poly and hit T just to size this up that obviously helps if I do this in all my axes okay so I'm going to bring that up to about there and pretty happy with that. That's looking kind of where I want it to be. Uh, I do need to raise it up a bit. So I'm just going to go into my side view and I'm going to lift that up to, let's say, probably five centimeters. So I'm just going to use the coordinate manager just to type five in there so I know it's fairly accurate. Okay, so now what I'm going to select all of my polygons, uh, which is if you have one selected already, which I have my central one, it's UW to select connected. And I'm going to hit D for extrude. Now you could hit control and just drag up, um, but sometimes you'll find that you, you won't get your settings here and you need to create caps. So I'm gonna turn that on and I'm just gonna drag in the viewport. And I'm gonna take this up, well, let's say probably six centimeters. So I'm just gonna type six centimeters into my offset field there and I'm going to now select just that central polygon again uh, and I'm just going to raise that up at another let's say let's take that up to say 15. okay so now we're looking we've got a, a reasonable looking start to our base so you can see that because of that extrusion, we've got something slightly odd going on, and that's that the, the bottom edge of the, the front facing part is slightly further in towards the center than the top. So we need to fix that. So I'm just gonna go into point mode. I'm gonna take a rectangle selection tool, and in the options, just make sure that only select visible elements is turned off, because I want to select all of those points across the bottom. And I'm just going to scale them up like so so they're now a level and I'm just judging this like so okay so that's looking pretty much where I want it to be what I need to do is I need to add a few cuts now uh, because if I was to smooth this oops I don't want to do that if I was to smooth this mesh now using a subdivision surfaces we'd find that it's a uh, looks more like a starfish than the, the base of a chair. So I'm just gonna undo that. I'm gonna go into my knife tool in loop mode 
and I'm just going to make a few cuts. And I'll do this in my top view, and I'm just judging this based on the grid, uh, the underlying grid, the, the viewport grid there. So I'm going to make a cut there. I'm going to make a cut there, 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 and there. And now we should find, I'll need, still need to make some cuts down the end just to make sure that the legs aren't too smoothed off at the end, but we should find that we have a, a much nicer looking mesh. So we've still got some issues to sort out. Uh, we need some cuts ac across the top, um, but we could do that maybe with some extrusions. So let's have a look at some of the different options we've got here. So I'm gonna turn that off. I'm just gonna select the polygons across the top here, like so. I'm going to turn that back on and I'm just going to hit control and drag up once. Okay, so I'm also going to do the same on the underside. So let's take these polys here and then make sure we get the next ones out just so that we can flatten off the underside exactly the same as we did for the top. Okay, so hold down control, make sure you're dragging on the right axis. Okay, like so. And that's looking pretty cool. Okay, so what do we need to do now? Well, we need to sort these ends out. So again, I'm just gonna turn off the sub D just because I find sometimes it's easier to do this kind of work when I'm looking at the underlying mesh. Uh, also, if you're getting some kind of confusing mesh feedback, what you can do is you can come into your display here and if you turn on isopalms that will clean up what you're seeing so with isopalms or just on a normal wireframe you can see the underlying subdivisions um, and these blue lines are the actual mesh so this the, the polygon mesh and if you turn on isopalm view you're only seeing your original edges and poly uh, which is sometimes very helpful. Anyway, let's go back to our top view, turn off the sub Ds, go into knife tool, uh, and I'm in polygon mode. I'm just gonna add some loop cuts again, just around like so. And last one, just there. Okay, and now you'll find when I turn this back on, we have much more what we're expecting. So now we could add casters or rubber feet. I'm gonna go for rubber feet for this particular one. Um, but before we get to doing the feet, let's just finish off this base. So I'm gonna take this central polygon here and hit I for extrude inner. And I'm just going to do two extrudes here. And now what we're gonna to need to do, I might do one more actually, just to try and round this out. Actually, we're probably all right with this. So now with those two extrudes, we should have a nice circular shape there, uh, which we can extrude upwards. And this is gonna be like a, a kind of just an extra bit of polish um, just to help us get what we need. Right, this one, this central section here, I'm gonna do and extrude in again and and then UY to increase that selection and I'm going to extrude it down like so okay so that's given us a really nice rounded collar uh, and the reason it's round not this hexagonal shape is because we've got a hexagon each side of it uh, where the legs are coming out so it's actually kind of rounding off between two hexagons um, I hope that makes sense but that's kind of what's going on there uh, I think it might be worth just doing a little bit of an extra extrude. So I'm going to hit UL just to make a loop selection there and just do one more, just slightly flattening extrude. Right, so let's call this the legs. That's looking cool. Uh, I'm going to now add, uh, let's just do the feet. Um, so the, the feet I want to be really very simple I'm going to take a disc and it's going to be five uh, so let's make it actually six so let's make it three centimeters across 
and we'll go two segments and 36 is fine. I'm just going to hide from view the legs themselves. Let's just turn on lines and make this editable. So we now have this central section here, which I want to raise up. Actually, we'll do that after. Um, we'll extrude everything first. So I'm just gonna go to uh, select everything, like so. I'm gonna hit Control and drag up to make an extrusion. Now I'll show you underneath now. You can see that this is actually hollow. Uh, there's no caps on there, which is what I meant when I was talking about the, the, the other section earlier on. Doesn't matter for now, because I'm gonna lift these up like this, and then I'm gonna hit EUW to select all. I'm gonna hit D, create caps is on. So this is a, the other way of doing the extrusion. And I'm just going to give this some thickness. So this is detail that's possibly unnecessary for this model, um, but it's still nice to show you how these different things work. So now I'm going to hit Control, drag up, and this is just going to be uh, a little extra section of foot. Hit T, and I'm just going to use the, the blue axis band here to control once I've sorted out what I'm doing. Okay, so UL, loop selection, T and I'm just going to use this axis band to bring that down like so. I for an inner selection and then I'm going to hit control just drag that back down a little bit. Uh, this again like I say this is probably unnecessary detail um, and I could go in and I could add kind of all the nuts and bolts and everything. What I think I will actually do for this particular model is just select those, I'm gonna hit I, just extrude that inner. Now I'm gonna hit V, and I'm going to go select, set selection, and I'm gonna call this the foot metal. And now that's kind of gonna be a set up for a different material. I'm just gonna drag this straight up. This is just the pin. Um, and with both still selected, I'm just gonna hit U, there we go. Right, so now we have one foot. Um, we have a tag. So if I double click that, you can see what we've got. Actually, I need to add to that selection, don't I? Okay, so select polygons. There we go. Right, so this selection now I can apply a different material to it very easily. Um, we have a foot. So let's call that foot. And uh, I can drop that selection, go back to object mode. And I'm going to add a MoGraph cloner. And this is going to be a radial cloner. There are going to be five clones, as we can see. And now our radius of the circle that we made, uh, or the disc that we made the um, legs out of was 45. So let's make this say, probably going to be about 43. And we'll add the foot as the clone. Now you can see that the, the axis is wrong, the plane that these clones are being generated on is wrong. So I'm gonna select the cloner and we'll just change this to XZ. So they will now sit on the floor. We might need to rotate it, let's have a look. Let's turn our legs back on. Let's go into our top view. So we can see we need to rotate this. Uh, and we can just do this like so. Now, we can also see, that's probably one too many. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I would also say that the radius of the cloner is too big. So let's take that back one. And I think even the feet might just be, a, just maybe a touch too big. Uh, in which case I can just select the actual mesh itself just reduce that in size just a little bit. We'll take the subdivision, which is for the legs, and we'll just lift that up a touch, just so that the, the pins are going into there. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Uh, this is, you know, this is just a, maybe 10 minutes work, something like that, 12 minutes. Uh, and also I'd be doing this an awful lot quicker if I was not explaining as I go if I was doing it kind of as I as I think. 
Now I want to make an adaptation here to, and I may change this, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the um, ends of these these legs. I'm just going to select these polygons across the top of each leg. And let's just zoom in so I don't get any other polys, like so. And this will help to just give a little extra form. Mm, uh, maybe not. Let's just try with the extras here. Okay, so those. Okay, I think that's a bit better. Uh, I may even take some extra edges just to shape these a bit more. Um, we'll try it and see what it looks like. So this is something I do as I'm kind of, so this may be based on a, a particular style of chair, something that I like that I've, or that I've seen, um, or that a client has asked to have a kind of a, a representation of. Um, and I like to kind of prototype a little bit on the way. So even if I think I know what I'm gonna do, it's nice to just kind of play with these ideas sometimes. Uh, and that's what you're seeing me do here. So I'm just going to come in, select a few of these edges, pop around here, just finish the selection off. And I'm gonna lower these edges and this should give us a bit of a kind of a slope, not a direct kind of, not a ramp like this, but more of a kind of a tapered affair. So let's grab those, bring them down like so. So yeah, that's, that's slightly more pleasing. And I think once there's uh, materials on here and there's some reflections in place, I think that's gonna look really quite lovely. Okay, so I'm now going to grab all of the bits we've got here, hit Alt G just to group them together. And we'll call this the base. Um, and I'm gonna add a simple column to this base now. I don't want a cube. I want a cylinder. So I'm going to take a cylinder and let's make the radius probably about three, maybe a touch bigger. Let's have a look. Okay, so we'll go for five and the height we can make probably about 50. Actually, let's make the radius smaller. Let's make this 2.5 or lift it up and we'll extrude some out at the bottom section. It's also too tall, we don't need it that tall. So let's go for, say, 35. I think 35 is probably gonna be about right. Okay, so height segments, let's make that two. And we'll make it an editable mesh. I'm gonna take a loop of polygons, not edges. So make sure you're in polygon mode for this part. Just select all the way around here. Zoom in so you can see what you're doing a little bit more clearly. And I'm just gonna rotate my view just so I can see across the bottom. I'm gonna hit D to extrude, and I'm going to extrude them pretty much right the way out, like so. Now, I'm just gonna go into my top view and make sure that's sitting centrally, which it isn't quite, so I just need to, I'm actually gonna move the base rather than that cylinder because I know that cylinder is bang in the middle. So let's just move that to match up like so. Okay. And that's to do with uh, the, the disc we made the feet from being a um, five-sided object. So it's, it's never gonna fit. It's not gonna be equal in the same way that a four-sided would or anything, you know, of, a, of an even-sided nature. Right, so before we do all the connection bits up here, uh, let's start on the actual seat itself. So we'll call this the column. Uh, we might add a bit more detail to that later on, but we might not, let's see. And let's get onto the base. So the base is gonna be done, uh, there's lots of different ways of doing this. It could be done with box modeling, it could be done with lofting or sweeping. Um, I'm gonna do it kind of a combination of box modeling, I suppose, in, in technique. 
um, but I'm just going to do it as though it's kind of a paper thin object to start with and then I'm going to uh, shape it and add the thickness afterwards a little bit like how we did with the base. Now I'm basing this uh, the design of this chair very loosely on uh, a, a, a 50s Eames task chair which I really love. Um, you can use the same technique for whatever you kind of chair you want to make uh, and I'm just going to I'm eyeballing it I'm not making a, a very specific chair I'm doing this really by eye um, but the, the the chair is kind of a, a this is just one of those traditional 50s chairs and a slightly egg-like okay so I have a plane now which is one by one I'm gonna make it editable um, so that we're not seeing those parametric lines and let's just very very roughly create the shape that we want so I'm gonna drag that up holding control just to create a, a, a basic back okay so I can tell immediately that I want to bring that edge and that edge forward uh, I'm just going to bring them forward a little bit and that should do it for me okay I think what I need to do is add just a few divisions to give me something to work on. So I'm going to select both these polygons and I'm just going to go down to subdivide and I'm going to do subdivision smooth subdivision which will curve off the edges where the divisions are like so. So although this is still too smooth and kind of in this direction uh, it's given me a very rough shape to work with. So I'm going to take, I'm going to go into point mode and I'm going to take these three points here and I'm going to move them down and back about so far and then the central one of those points I'm going to take just a little bit further like so. Now that looks quite extreme as it is but that's fine. Uh, I'm going to take these three points and just move them forward I'm going to lift them up just a little bit uh, and that will give us a slight lip uh, for the kind of the thighs that just make it a bit more comfortable. I'm going to take these three and I'm just going to lift them up just a touch. About so. And now I think we can probably look at it smooth. So let's add it to a subdivision surface. And still not quite there. We need to. I'm actually going to do this a slightly different way. I'm going to take those polygons and I'm going to rotate them back like so okay happy with that but I need to make a few more divisions so I'm going to take a knife and I'm just going to make a cut around the back I'm going to make a cut across the front also going to make a cut across the back there just so I can shape it a bit more and I'm going to do two cuts kind of lengthways and let's just do this in the top view so I know what I'm doing I could turn on snapping and I could turn on guides and all these kind of things. Uh, sometimes that's a really good way to work. Uh, I'm not going to do it for this. This is just a, a basic kind of modeling by eye tutorial. Um, and I don't want to get too bogged down in some of those extra details, which I don't think are necessary if you're learning what you're, you're doing in a basic kind of way at this point. Uh, right, so what I want to do now is just make sure I'm going to do this in the front view, I believe. Or in my right hand view. Let's just bring this up to full view. Okay, right, so I can see I've got a few weird lumps. So those two I need to raise up. All I'm doing here is I'm just smoothing out this line. I'm going to take that one and that one and use the scale tool just to bring them in just a bit. And actually, I think I might take all of those and just bring them in just a touch, like so. Okay, let's look at the side view. Right, so now I'm going to show you a new tool and I'm going to take that central point. And if we come down to the attributes manager with our live selection 
selected and change this mode from normal to soft selection. You'll see in the preview, we get this kind of a yellow fall off. And if we go to the soft selection controls here, we can change the radius of this fall off. And as you see, the yellow changes there. And this means we can kind of gently, it's like using the magnet tool, but we can gently bring some of these points back without it being too drastic. Uh, and I'm doing that with a few just to kind of make this very slightly more, more domed. Uh, I'm gonna take that central one there and bring it down just a little bit. Okay, and this lets you just kind of, you get that natural fall off without having to worry about uh, any harsh, jaggy things going on. And it, it can be a, a massive, massive help. Now, I think the top of this chair might be just slightly too far forward. So I'm gonna take just a few of these polygons across the, the points across the top, probably these four, maybe those five points there. I'm just gonna drag them back just a little, just because I don't want them to be kind of hovering over the shoulders. It's not kind of a wrap around the shoulders chair. Okay, right, so I'm gonna go into object mode and I'm just gonna hit T, because I think this needs to be widened just a little bit. Uh, I've also noticed I've got a strange cut so I obviously made a mistake somewhere along the line. So I'm gonna to go to polygon mode. Let's turn off soft selection. So go back to the live selection tool and we can go to our options and we'll go to normal mode. Right, now we can see I made a cut here and I need to make that cut go right the way across. So let's turn off the subdivisions and go into knife mode. Now I'm gonna use the line tool and as I get close to a point or an edge or a polygon, you can see it gets highlighted. So I want that point there, and I want to drag right the way across, like so. Now, if I turn on the sub Ds, we should have a nice smooth shape. Okay, I can see there's a little bit of a bump going on there as well, so let's fix that. Now I'm gonna go into display mode, and I'm gonna go to lines and points select that plane which is our chair base go into live selection mode i'm going to set that point and that point hit t just widen them out i'm going to set that point and that point i'm going to reduce them to about there and all i'm doing is just kind of smoothing off this line all right so that's looking pretty cool happy with that so what i need to do now is give it its depth so I'm going to select all, and I'm gonna hit D for extrude. Make sure that create caps is on. And I'm going to just give one very small extrusion to start with, um, and turn on, or, or increase this maximum angle to something over 90 degrees. I'm gonna do another one to give this a bit more thickness. And this is gonna be kind of the plastic shell that these chairs had. And now I'm gonna take uh, cut and paste those polygons that I had already selected UI to invert the selection and just delete and that will get rid of all the ones that I don't want so this is going to be my chair and that newly created that I just pasted in is going to be the cushion section um, because what I like about the, the Eames example of this chair is that uh, there's kind of this this cushioning so it's like a plastic shell with a, a fabric and foam cushioning um, so we need to add that into a, a sub D as well, um, just so that it matches up. I'm gonna take the cushion and I'm gonna hit D and I'm gonna extrude this. I'm gonna give it a fairly thick extrude there and one smaller one. And there we go. Okay, so we now have our two sections. And what we can do is go to the loop selection on edge mode and I'm gonna take that loop that goes all the way around the edge and I'm just gonna hit T uh, just to scale it down on the X axis, just so it's slightly less thick. Like so, now I'm gonna go into object mode and I'm just gonna recess this softer part just very slightly into the, the plastic just so it sits slightly better. Okay, so that's gonna go like that. Now, because I decreased the size of that extrude, you can see we automatically have a, a slight seam look. 
Now you could go in and you could add stitching and everything. Uh, for this example, I'm not going to. Um, I think that's absolutely fine how it is, just for kind of a low detail uh, version of this model. Now I do need to add a bit of detail to the bottom, so I'm going to go back to our original chair model. I'm just going to have a look under here and see how I want to do this. And I think what I'm going to do is add a bulge in the plastic uh, like this. I'm going to take this and hit I for an inner extrude, bring those polygons forward and down. Like so, I'm going to do another one. And now this is going to be placed over the column. Like so, I'm going to do one small extrusion just to flatten this out. Okay, so that's almost ready. I think one more and then hit T. And you can see at the moment, if, if you're in scale mode, you can see the, the size here and the y-axis is just two and a half centimeters. So I'm just gonna hit zero and that is now perfectly flat. Might be intersecting slightly, so we can just drag it down. And there we go. Now, if you wanna go and clean up any of this mesh, then this is a good time to do it. Uh, I'm just gonna take those points back up so they suit the egg shape a bit more. And I think now we can take our chair shift it so the center of gravity is over that point and if you wanted to you could come in and you could make cuts and you could add the handles and the levers and all that kind of thing and you could extrude this back up and you could add the bolts that are holding this on add a plate all that kind of thing but i don't think we'll ever see it for um, that close this chair wasn't really made for that it was made to be seen at kind of a three-quarter view uh, maybe in the distance uh, and I just wanted to show you a few tools. So if you wanted to make the control handles, you'd do it exactly the same as this column um, and all those sort of things. And if you wanted to make like a, a ergonomically shaped paddle to go on the end of it, well, you know what, let's just do it. No, no point me just sitting there talking about it. Let's just do it. So I'm gonna take a cylinder. I'm gonna make it really quite small. Radius of one, let's make it about 30 centimeters and probably don't need 36 divisions here. Uh, and we'll make it in the, let's go for the x-axis. Right, so let's add a polygon or just a plane. We'll make this three by six. Bring this out like so. Actually, let's not do this with a plane. Let's do this with a box. So I'm gonna show you a slightly different way of doing this. So let's go three by three by three. I'm going to bring it out to the end of that arm, make it editable, and I'm going to add some divisions, okay, or some extrusions. So I'm going to hold down control, bring that out, I'm going to add the whole thing into a subdivision surface. Let's get back into that cube. Let's just grab that end face again. Actually, it doesn't matter which face. I'm going to just make a cut first, just a loop cut, just to add a slice around there just to neaten up that back end. Okay, now I'm gonna take this polygon on the front here. And let's just zoom out slightly. Control, drag that out. And I'm going to just scale this sideways like so. Hit E for move. I'm gonna drag out a bit of a paddle and probably do one more actually let's lift all of these up and that was UY by the way just to increase that selection UK to go back to that which is a decrease selection hold down control and I'm going to just bring that down like so and I think I need to take this end polygon which is still facing out and just rotate it so that we're keeping that kind of form looking reasonably good. Okay, so this is gonna be our one of our control handles. Now, this really is rough and ready, but it will do the job. So let's take all of those, group them together, just call this the handle. I'm going to copy that, hit V to go to our pop-up menu, projects, back into project one, paste, 
and now I can just rotate that 90 degrees I can bring it out just a little bit bring it up into there again I'm not going to go into drilling out all the holes and creating all the, the details for that um, that's uh, for another tutorial I think so let's just take that cylinder and reduce the length of it so it's not popping out the other side okay I think I might do one thing just to make it look just in case we see this area and that's just to make the cylinder editable and go into my right hand view and let's just turn on grid shading I'm going to go into polygon mode I'm going to take my knife tool and I just yeah in line is fine I'm going to add a cut across there and a cut across here I'm going to loop select Ah, my cut didn't go all the way through. Okay, so let's go back. I've just stepped back so I've not got those cuts anymore. I'm going to make that editable. Polygon mode, knife, single and visible only. I had turned on, which is not good. So let's make a cut across there and then a cut across there. Now I can take my loop selection, do a little extrusion. One more, like so, and I should find I've got what well, is essentially just a little bit of a collar. Uh, I might actually just neaten this up just very slightly just by getting all of those polygons and in world space. I don't know why that's not caught up. Just drag them out a bit. Yeah, there we go. So now we can see just a little bit of extra detail right okay so sorry about that slight detour um, I'm going to well so now you can just grab some materials could grab that one on just stick it on the chair uh, I'm gonna grab another one stick it on the, the fabric let's just give that a nice color uh, let's make a nice bright orange uh, I could go to my content browser just grab myself um, one of the textures from the texture pack there's my ones let's go for a brushed metal let's throw that directly on there we'll throw that onto there and onto the arm I'm going to grab another new material which is just going to be a very 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 basic um, black plastic uh, all I'm doing is just using this the specular here and just gonna crank it up very slightly and give it a slight inner width hey anyway, it's not really a material tutorial so I'm not gonna worry about it too much uh, go back to my objects and I'm gonna open up the base just apply that to the foot and there we have a fairly rough and ready but reasonable looking chair okay so we can close all these down I'm going to group them all and just call this the task chair and um, I'll set up a render for this I'm not going to bother showing you that we'll talk about rendering properly at another time time when I've actually got space to actually kind of go through what I'm doing with you that uh, and we'll do the same with materials um, because this is the very first of the the new cinema 4d essentials course um, I want to concentrate on various tasks at a time and this was just to kind of get you using uh, a few of the the modeling tools um, and thinking about how you can go about actually creating things so we'll do more specifics on materials uh, and rendering later on um, there's also a few things that I would just point out um, so this scene just before we go has one two three four subdivision surface objects in it now you can, if you want, just use one and you could group all of those things inside one, um, which works quite well, if, especially if they're all at the same subdivision level. 
which they are. So let's add one to the scene and we will take the cube, we will take the cushion, we'll take the legs and what else was there and the chair and you can see this now looks like a right mess. Well, if you take a null and you drop that under the subdivision surface first and then you put all those objects as a child of the null, you now have the same result as you had before, but you can then start deleting certain objects. So all those extraneous sub Ds you can get rid of and you end up with the same end result, the same chair. Okay, so hopefully that's been of some use. Um, I hope it's been of interest. Uh, it's quite a fun, nice little chair. Uh, it could do with some tarting up. And if you were going to have this just in a, a render of a room, I think it would be absolutely fine. Uh, it's um, not going to be perfect for close-ups, but then that's not the, the, the point of this tutorial, is to get you kind of started and up and running. So thanks very much, and I'll see you all again in the next video.